Welcome <laughs> to Binary Jazz. The one thing that uh, the Zoom lady adds is enough of a gap at the beginning of the rec audio recording so that our little uh, intro uh, music that I add in the post processing, like the, the one part of my job, it gives us a little bit more of a leeway for that to fade out and, and us to start talking and not just talking over the music and not be able to hear anything. Uh, welcome to Binary Jazz. It's a podcast uh, where uh, three folks talk about things, uh, which is basically every podcast. Two folks and a robot. Yeah, two folks and a robot this week. Uh, that's basically every podcast ever. Uh, but, but, but it's different because uh, Allison, Allison Plus on the internet, will sometimes provide us with a topic uh, that Gary, who's binary Gary on the internet, and me, who's jazz sequence on the internet, uh, know nothing about. And we need to then try to uh, explain what we think that topic might be. And uh, hijinks ensue. Um, and most of the time, we just uh, bullshit through our uh, the 40 minute Zoom call until it kicks us off. I was going to say, I think Allison's job is difficult too, because while Chris and I don't know much, <laughs> the stuff we know is varied and bizarre so it's like throwing a dart at a wall that has like 27 dart boards like you might hit a dart board or you might hit wall yeah 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 but the dart boards are all various sizes too like there's a big dart board the little dart board sometimes you'll just nail it like like in one and you're also i think throwing the darts at the wall with blindfolds, blindfolds. on yeah yeah and then the darts are made out of different materials. So sometimes they stick, they're all different weights. They don't even have they don't even have the, the little sharp bit. Yeah. Occasionally, it, instead of a dart, it's a banana. Yeah. If, if <laughs> in this in this metaphor, I'm are is hitting the the dart board. Does that signify us knowing the topic? or knowing something similar to the topic, or does that signify us you're not knowing? It. No, I don't know. Like, it like doesn't is, matter. The, is the goal to nail it in the middle, in the bullseye of the dartboard, is that, does that mean like we definitely know what it is, or does that mean we definitely do not know? I thought it was you knowing, so I'm not even throw. aiming for the dartboards. It's like, I can't cover certain topics because I'm like, you probably know this. Yeah. But then again, there are some things that I'm like, you probably know it. And then I'm like, you've never heard of cryptozoology? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The funny thing is, uh, now I do. <laughs> like, a lot, a lot of these things, like, like I see it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my interests may be niche, but they do pop up quite a fair bit. So yeah, I come by I the feel like a more well-rounded person as a result of this show. I've learned a lot. Yes. Yeah. Well, well rounded like a uh, Dyson sphere, as it were. Very well rounded <laughs> like a Dyson sphere. Yeah. You know, uh, and that's another thing. Dyson sphere came up in. Um, so my 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 son is doing uh, all like uh, homeschool stuff, and one of the sites that we found is called Brilliant Math, and it's not actually math. It's just it's I, it's probably just brilliant actually. Uh, but anyway, they, they, it's a lot of math stuff, but it's also a lot of math adjacent stuff like probability and statistics and like, and there's like stuff on like quantum physics and all sorts of other ridiculous stuff. And so he came across, and he, but he's also, so he's coming across things like that. Uh, like he learned about like the Amazon warehouses and, and how they like sort things. And that was a cool thing. Uh, but he's also been uh, watching these YouTube videos by somebody who, who like essentially takes the science of science fiction sort of approach and like mm -hmm. and in some context either through the, the youtube thing or through the brilliant thing he came across the concept of a dyson sphere uh as well and he's been talking about dyson sphere and so like i have to like kind of calibrate my brain to like remember that dyson sphere is supposed to be a sphere around a planet and not a large lump <laughs> of hot dog <laughs> which is what i was like called my the dyson sphere was I mean, it would make his school boss. reports more interesting if he had It them. would, yeah. <laughs> I was going to call up my boss and he was talking about he went to a coffee house and ordered, like, I don't know, something to drink. And as he was sitting there, he said, I'm kind of hungry. And went up and looked at the menu and decided to have a hot dog with his coffee. And now I'm turned off of hot dogs for a while. Also, what kind of coffee shop is serving a hot dog? No. I don't know. 
I mean, he's somewhere out near Santa Fe, so who the heck knows? Yeah, who I knows? Think that, do I don't think that justifies it at all. <laughs> well, that just had this mental image of him like dipping the hot dog in his coffee like a donut and taking a bite. And I'm like, nope, those don't work together at all. Not even a little. Too early for speaking of hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to think of a, subject, a topic for today. Cool, let's do it. It is asterism. Asterism is that a s t e r ism? Yes. Asterism. So, um, my first role playing experience uh, was a two and a half or three year campaign of. Uh, mage the ascension which is a white wolf uh property uh so it's set in the world of darkness and it was about people who do magic um and the storyteller as they are called in white wolf games uh had uh, an npc and his npc was named adam i think but Adam had a familiar that was a dragon and the dragon's name was Aster. Mm. So obviously the first thing that I think of is, uh, is those characters. And there was some weird like soul bonding thing and the dragon wasn't really real and like, but like a figment of the kid's imagination because it was a kid and like, it was, it was, yeah, it's, it's wacky. Um, uh, as such things should be. And uh, yeah, so so obviously uh, an asterism is a thing that a person named Aster does. Like, oh, that's such an asterism. That's an asterism. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> Gary talking about space yeah. or no, Gary getting passionate about the difference between Blue Origin and SpaceX. That's a Garyism. <laughs> All right. So first off, I feel the need to defend myself because if you don't obviously see the difference in what they're trying to accomplish, like I, I, I don't know what we can do about that. It was never the question, and it was never about. <laughs> but but it was yes, never yes, about yes, whether or not the actually, argument was yes. valid. Immediately, that it, that immediately worked. Because now, now I don't know what I was going to say about asteroids. So, uh, isn't an aster like a part of a plant? Uh, sure. So yes. I think it has something to do Absolutely. with um, yes, and uh, that part of the plant um, produces pollen. Reproduction, right? I think it's I think it's like a plant uh, breeder or plant the study of plant breeding, asterism. I think what I love about this is that is the assumptions of what I must be like either reading about or like <laughs> have stumbled. Upon. <laughs> I think I think a lot of the times that doesn't enter into no. at least my thought process until way late in the conversation and then it's like what were you reading why <laughs> just why how did this come up I, I appreciate that vote of confidence Allison but I'm, I'm not I'm not thinking on that level generally I'm yeah. often just baffled by the word and trying to like take it apart in my head but, but thanks for the tip. I'm going to use that coin forward. <laughs> You're just going to try to retrace my internet history, which is careful. It's a rocky road out there. <laughs> I hear you. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely can see uh, how um, the uh, trying, trying to figure out the root cause of, uh, of a particular topic uh, from its end result uh, would be uh, difficult. Uh, given the few topics that I have submitted, because they're generally uh, fairly like tangential and like there's a circuitous path to get to that end point. Yeah. I think that's what I makes usually start those with some kind of article about space. Yeah, right. That's that's fair. I liked the tunnel you walked through, Gary. Thank you. I think there's another one coming up in about 15 minutes or so. Yeah, for those of you listening, Gary is uh, 
come dialing in from a remote location. He's Gary on the spot. Uh, and he is a uh, uh, man on the street. Uh, yeah, amateur, amateur cryptozoologist in search of the rare East Coast Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, I heard that the I heard that the East Coast Bigfoot was in uh, West Virginia. So there's this uh, this state road that we take, uh, US 601. If you're interested in in the area, and all along 601, there are these farms that have like silhouettes of Bigfoot cut out like just perched up, I don't know, maybe 50 yards back from the road, just, I guess, for some variety. I'm not really sure why. Um, it's very bizarre. Maybe I mean, that was going to be my- stock into yeah. staying in. That was going to be my question, was why? I don't know. But then, like, I mean, just to put it in perspective, this is, like, near the guy with the sign that says Jesus is coming in 2030, so get ready. I mean, so it's, I'm not- I'm not looking too deep for meaning here. Man. I just appreciate the show. I appreciate someone who projects it far enough in the future that you're like, okay, we've got some time then. <laughs> got some time. <laughs> I mean, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't the world supposed to end in 2012? Wasn't that like the Aztec calendar? And then that didn't Maybe it happen. did. Maybe and then, we're all ghosts. Yeah. Maybe. I had a I had a moment. Um, there's a character in the uh, so again back to role playing. Um, spoilers for anybody who uh, is playing or going to play uh, Witchlight Carnival. Uh, there is a character in the Witchlight Carnival that is a giant swan, and the giant swan is a gossip, but she also likes talking about metaphysics. And um, <laughs> so. Uh, one of uh, one of the questions, um, one of the questions uh, that I asked the players that were in the Swan at the time, because the Swan, the Swan uh, is is a part of a ride. Uh, she and other Swans like her uh, have these little like gondolas that go behind her uh, that she she carries through the through the uh, this little lake. Uh, and she, one of the questions that she asked. Uh, the characters, the player characters, was um, how do I know that you are real? Um, and it led to a weird, interesting, not as meta as it could have gotten conversation about uh, about metaphysics and reality and why and are we all actually here or just figments of a swan's imagination? It could have gotten more meta. I was I hadn't even actually thought about this uh, at the time as I was as I was running this. But I could have been like, how do I know that we're not all just part of a giant game and our moves and actions are orchestrated by other people who, uh, who tell us to do things and we just do those things. And I could have gotten really like, absolutely. Yeah, but what if we are? Like, yeah, let's not. That's all right. Because <laughs> there are those not moments. go down the simulation rabbit hole, please. <laughs> okay. I was just going to say, what if we are? Like, it doesn't matter. There's still those moments where, like, I'm still riding a high of last Saturday when I plucked an apple off of a tree in an orchard and took a bite of it. This is the second year in a row and I've done it. And, like, gazing out in the mountains, a little bit of clouds. And, uh, you know, it's just, like, magical. Oh, my God. It's so green there. Yeah, it is. Right? We haven't had the cool weather enough to change the leaves yet. Like, there's yeah. a tree over there that's kind of yellow, but huh. it's all still green. Yeah, we uh, we've got all the all the fall colors here. Um, I had to actually do a a Google search because I wanted to make sure I have eleven players. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure that if every single one of those eleven players took the gondola swan, that there would be a different question that the swan, a different metaphysical question that the swan oh. would ask them. <laughs> And there's only like four or maybe six in the book. So I had to go out and find more. So I did a search on like metaphysics, metaphysical questions so that I could have, I could expand my list. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's some good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rabbit hole in itself for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't, and I, it's, it's hard. Like, like, you know, most of my, most of my players are kids. And so like, I, I was trying to scale it to be like things that both they would, um, they would get and understand and be able to like comment on, but also things that aren't such deep rabbit holes that they start freaking out because I know that <laughs> yeah. occasionally break them. 
Yeah, well, on occasion, my kids have had like, like freakouts about sort of me- metaphysical, like, are we all, is this all real sort of questions, particularly like if we watch something that like has some weird thing in it that kind of touches on that subject, then it'll make them send them down like a thought spiral. Um, and, and so I wanted to make sure that it was like, like defined as a metaphysical question, but not so like, like jaw droppingly, like mouth agape in the cosmic horror of it all. Uh, that they're gonna have to, you know, uh, roll for for sanity in Call of Cthulhu terms. That's smart. Otherwise, you'll end up having everybody having a meltdown at the same time. And that yeah, really... right, right. <laughs> that's that's no, that's not fun. So, Worst so question, session ever. The so questions that I asked were, uh, "What is joy?" Uh, which is from the book. Uh, How do I know that oh, you wow. exist? Uh, which is also from the book. Um, and then why is there something rather than nothing, which is one that I got from the internet, um, which I like that one quite a bit. <laughs> these are all the, yeah, these are all good binary jazz questions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe we should, uh, maybe I can save on, save these for, for the, for the, the last 10 minutes and we can have a, a 10 minute discussion. <laughs> of the of the why is there something yeah. of nothing? Oh, I can answer that in 10 minutes. Gary, I have a question. What kind of apple was it that you ate? Um, actually, there were several. Uh, the first one was a pink lady. Um, and it, it, was, it was a bit too sweet for the occasion. Uh, and then they had like uh, red and gold delicious, uh, which were just fine. Pretty underwhelming, actually. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the other one. Mm. I'll remember it as soon as this episode is over. There was one that was just like the perfect flavor for the occasion. Um, and I think we got like five pounds of it. <laughs> and there's probably two apples left now. Was it a Cortland? Cortland are the cartooniest no. of the apples. It was not. Um, it was a, oh God. I, I bought like a gallon of um, cider too of it because it was so nice, amazing. Cool. Yeah, I'll send some of that our way. I'll, I'll take I'll take some of that. Just yeah, cross border cider, totally acceptable. Yeah, yeah. Whenever we do hard, our hard uh, cider, hard cider or or not, not, no. just yeah. Well, I actually yeah, got a send gallon. That, and a half send that over to me, and I'll make it hard. <laughs> yeah. Um. Whenever we do our our binary jazz in person meetup, because I know that's something we're all planning on. Um. We need to do it like where we can enjoy fruit right off the tree. It's. Well, we need to do the we need to do the binary jazz virtual conference first, and then we can have then we can plan for the binary jazz uh, in person meetup. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't even know if I could handle the joy of being there in person though. Like, I think sometimes the distance of the camera helps bring me down to like a normal level of human. <laughs> oh, I want to see uh, a a joy filled Allison. <laughs> that that is a, that I is a thing about it. And remember what Chris's hug felt like at WordCamp Aww. US. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think probably both of you separately have gotten hugs for me. That's true. In the before times. Yeah, in the before times. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, before. Oh, wait. Sorry. Here's my uh, my next tunnel. Ooh. And uh, going through a tunnel uh on a while while talking on a smartphone is an asterism it looks like a I've great called worse. Cat. oh i wonder can you hear the Ooh. echo yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. asterism <laughs> <laughs> all right straight or left i'm going straight kind of like the tunnel from before. harry potter where the dementors come and beat him and the other doesn't it it does it looks a lot like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like, that's my go-to tunnel reference I guess. yeah oh i'm looking at the camera and pointing it downward but you can't see my face oh wait there's a lot of buttons on this thing there we go. there's actually no buttons they're on the side but there's a lot of virtual buttons on this thing is this a good time to invite people to come to the binary jazz virtual conference sure i mean we kind of yes. uh we we've been i i will preface a little bit we've been sort of uh discussing the idea of a bin jazz conf 
um, because uh, it was one of those ideas, much like binary jazz itself, that uh, wasn't horrible, wasn't 100% horrible. It like sounded like a, a, a dumb idea uh, that uh, kind of wasn't. Um, and since we, you know, went all in with binary jazz, when we sort of was like, hey, you guys should just, you know, sort of podcast, uh, we, I kind of thought, let, well, hey, we should just throw a virtual conference um, where we hang out uh, and, and give actual presentations and then do a binary jazz thing at the end and actually like stream it and do stuff and maybe have people speaking. So uh, if you would like to come, uh, I guess stay tuned to the website because we'll post stuff. It's, it's still in the theoretical phase, but we kind of sort of maybe have a date that it might happen, well, sort of. I don't think it's theoretical anymore, not that you just announced it. Yeah, <laughs> I, guess, I guess we kind of committed to it now. <laughs> I don't know what I'll I, 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 I would, talk about. Yeah, I mean, I, so so my thought for uh, topics was mostly just stuff that because uh, again, like this is a conference for us, and if other people join, then that's cool. Um, so I my thought is like things that we want to like show or tell each other uh, should be the requirement for topics. Um, so I think that I know what my topic is. I'm not sure how I'm going to present it yet, um, but I, I think that I know what my topic is. Gary, do you know what yours is? What? No, that my topic will not be very surprising to anyone. No, of course not. <laughs> I have to say, Chris, while you were first talking about that, I, I don't know, a long time ago, I was talking about some of the badass people that I cross my walk when I go early in the morning to the park before like the sun rises and it's open and whatnot. But it's been like in the 40s, which isn't pleasant at 6 a.m. to walk. And, and like, it's just, oh, and it's dark. That's the other problem. Like, really dark. Like, unsafe dark. Like, not like I'm worried about people dark, but worried about tripping and, like, hurting my sister. Anyway, I digress. I passed one of those people that I had referred to in the past as a badass. And I haven't seen her walking in, like, a month. So, as Chris was talking, I just, like, we had, like, a brief 10 word exchange, but it was fun. It was, I don't know. There was like that joy, like, hey, there you are. I haven't seen you in forever. I'd like to see you walking. You know? Made me happy. I don't know where I am. <laughs> I think I think Gary should start off the, the conference with like a virtual meditation on a walk. <laughs> and yeah. it'll be like, I don't know where I am. <laughs> we'll be like, ooh, meta. <laughs> Attracts. I think that this, this trail is ending here, but I'm not sure. Whoa, look at this tree. This is a big tree. And it has a sign underneath it. Let's see what the sign says. It's a cottonwood, a large tree when mature. The bark is corky, thick, deeply furrowed with sharp interlacing ridges. It is often regarded as, as the fastest growing tree species native to the United States. Legend has that Native Americans discovered the teepee design by twisting the leaf into a cone. Wow. Legend has it. <laughs> and, and what's also unique about that tree is it's got asterisms all over it, which are uh, the little uh, crinkles in the bark. Yeah, way up in the... <laughs> One of the byproducts of continuing my walk now is that I have to return home and I'm 2.8 miles into it at 11.30. <laughs> But yeah, I, was I, forget that I, I forget that I'm not on the same time zone as Gary anymore. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You're not even on the same same time. You're closer to me, yeah. my time zone. And that's an asterism, not knowing where you are because not of time zone. Not knowing where zones. you are in the in the time zone continuum. Yep, yep. Oh, I just swiped right, and there's a uh, there's a view I can see all of you. But the good news is I'm still in the Greenway, according to this sign. Well, I'm, I'm content that you're at least on a, a paved section, which means you can't be that lost. Yeah, eventually you'll yeah. wind up somewhere. Yeah, I'm just worried that if I wind up somewhere, it's going to be like, well, it can't be more than like three-ish miles from my house. So wherever I end up there, I'll be, it'll be fine. <laughs> right, I end up there, I'll be there. Truer words were never spoken. Wait, no, we need to be adversarial. That's a horrible idea, Gary. That's not, yeah. <laughs> yeah I love it. You, it you initially. don't disagree nearly as much as you used to. <laughs> yeah, the original <laughs> concept of this, I've gotten soft in my old 
the original yeah. concept you found was common ground. Yeah. yeah. But but honestly, Chris is right pretty often, so. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I think I've tried to embrace yes and as opposed to no but, so. <laughs> Can I tell you something silly that happened the other day? Yes, and we'd love to hear it. Okay. I was, um, I was playing some guitar at the house, and I don't know, like my glasses, they are always secured on my face. But I was playing guitar, I wasn't like really moving around that much, but they fell off my face, which was odd. I'm like, okay, they're usually a fixed pretty salad on my face. So I picked them up, I put them back on, I adjusted the arms, whatever, and I'm playing some more. And like, I don't know, 90 seconds later, they fell off again. I'm like, well, to hell with this, put the guitar away. I've played guitar since then. I've worn my glasses since then, and it hasn't happened since then. So, oh, it was uh, it was a ghost. It was a, it was a poltergeist that said that they were not ready for you to be playing uh, uh, guitar at that time. But do you yes. need your glasses to play? Probably not. Um. No, it just felt, no, that's a good point. It just felt weird about them. Maybe I'll play without them. I mean, I say this as someone who has glasses and contacts and it depends on obviously your actual vision. Yeah. But like, I feel like muscle memory wise, I could figure it out. Um, but yeah, when I'm looking at my left hand, I'm only looking to just see like distance my index finger is from a fret before barring. Right. So yeah, I definitely don't, I definitely don't need them for that. It's, yeah, good call. All right, well, no glasses next time I play. No glasses next time. Good chat. Don't set them down. Just put them on your head so you don't lose them. That's, There's that's 100% chance I will lose them there because I never put them there. <laughs> Where the hell did I put my glasses? <laughs> that's such a dad move. <laughs> An asterism is uh, that thing that your grandparents warned you about, that if you cross your eyes, then they will stay that way. Yeah, uh, and so an asterism is when you actually like like you know cross your eyes for a long period of time, and your eyes actually do stay that way. It's an asterism. Like my, my grandma told me that coffee would stunt my growth. Yeah, I heard that too. But well, I also told me heard that carrots would help my vision, and I ate yeah. a lot of carrots as a kid. Yeah. Uh, but I also heard yeah, wouldn't like wouldn't let it, it wouldn't it, carrots. Ironically, carrots do not do not affect keratoconus. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, my my grand my grandmother also told me to stay away from bees because they could be a killer bee and I would die. So that's also a thing. So and, last Friday we did not record because I was at a pumpkin patch. Yes. The next day we went to the apple orchard, which Charlotte just called the apple patch. Apple patch, which I love. In line with the pumpkin. Charlotte's my, Charlotte's my favorite. <laughs> we, what I was going to say though is we should go. Fine too, but they just don't come up with this sort of stuff. <laughs> we need to go to a carrot patch together, the three of us. That's where we should meet in a carrot patch. I mean, we have a carrot patch in the backyard. We just pulled a bunch of carrots right. out of it. Done. <laughs> Chris will go outside and find like two tents and we'll just be like, hello? <laughs> <laughs> Alan set mine to talk, and Allison will just yell from inside hers. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we've been upgraded to infinite minutes. No, have we? Have my we? thing doesn't say that. Oh, well, I, I feel like it's going to be a very long walk. Said so. Oh, good. Well, uh, yeah, I guess that does happen uh, at the very beginning uh, of uh, like, because this is a new Zoom account, so I guess that does happen the first couple calls. Well, I guess I will have to manually hit a stop recording at some point. But well, first, wait, can we find out what asterism is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, first we need to find out what asterism is. Okay. Um, so sadly, this is oh. one of your dartboards, or what I consider to be one of your dartboards. Wait, what in the hell? <laughs> Hold on. Um, an asterism is a pattern or group of stars that's part of a larger constellation that's well known. I feel like I should have known that. I feel like Gary should have known that. But this um, is it. So for instance, like the Big Dipper. Is going home. part of Ursa Major. So it's like the seven brightest stars in Ursa Major. So that's an asterism. Um, yeah. There's a, bunch, there's a bunch of other ones, but they're like kind of lesser known constellations. So I was like. 
Well, that is an asterism. Huh. Yeah, no, I didn't. I, I mean, it sounded like something I should know, but it sounded like a familiar thing, but. I like my first definition though, Ms. I is, think so, yeah. 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 It's a thing that, that a person named Aster does. It's an asterism. Oh, the one thing that I did find was that there was this reference to something, this constellation that it's spelled B O and then O with an umlaut T E S. And then they're like, also known as the ice cream cone. <laughs> so I was like, well, that's the best constellation in the world. It's like, whoops. <laughs> whoops. <laughs> Also known as the ice cream cone. I, anyway, I want to find well, the ice cream uh, cone now. Recently, when I have been walking in the darkness in the morning, um, Orion is like square overhead, um, which is always pretty. I don't want to say intimidating, but it, it's it feels it just feels so big, you know? Maybe. Yeah. Like, I don't expect like, the stars to attack me, but there's like this sense of, wow, that's really far away and enormous. And, and here I am, you know, big. I'm not big, that's big. Yeah, um, go out to the desert sometime and you'll have uh, yeah. a similar sort of experience staring up at, because then like, you know, that far away from uh, lights, from the city, uh, you get to see everything and just like, it's huge. I, I think my first experience of that way back in high school, um, or the first experience I have like remembering that experience, um, it, when I was still um, doing like the youth group thing, we went to um, uh, South America, Guyana, South America, and we went to their their national youth gathering for Lutheran youth in Guyana, South America, which was like in the rainforest. Like I literally have a picture of a beetle that I could stand on the back of. It was so big and could sort of support my weight, like with one foot. But I mean, it was this enormous beetle. But there was one night, like we went for a, a night hike and it was just so dark. And so we were walking like down this sort of trail in the forest. We came out in this opening and I looked up and there were like, I mean, I can't even like fathom the number of stars. Like it was, it was staggering. Like it took, it absolutely just took my breath away. Um, I'd love to see that again. That was, that was something. Maybe I need to go to the desert. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause, uh, and, and in fact, uh, uh, Bryce National Park has a annual, like, I don't know, space star looking dark sky event thing. Uh, in the summer uh, where you can go and and because the thing about being in the, in the desert and, and being in, in the Utah desert in particular is that it's pretty flat and there's not a lot of trees obviously because uh, <laughs> desert so like you don't have a lot of things blocking your view um, and so at Bryce what they do during this event um, is uh, they have all sorts of like telescopes and things and they have them pointed at different constellations and different like you know things and they have uh, some of the rangers there so they can say and this is what we're looking at and this is what it's why it's cool and helping you find the thing and focus it and whatever and um, so it's it's we did that uh, a few years ago uh, it was pretty cool maybe after the time change I'll take the kids out late one night and we'll go I, I, I wouldn't have to drive very far from here to get like a pretty stunning view. Yeah, yeah. we also get um, we also get the Perseids. Uh, oh. and if, yeah, if you go like there's there's several places not that far from from town where you can go where it doesn't have an, uh, a lot of light pollution. Um, but the best place to see that is obviously like um, f much further out. Um, yeah. Wow, actually, this conversation has made me look forward to the time change this year. <laughs> so thanks for that. Uh, well, in the four minutes that are remaining that, that, that are like an artificial timer now, uh, I guess uh, we should, I, I, can, I can propose some of the other uh, metaphysical questions that I did not uh, oh, yeah. ask. One of them, uh, one of them, uh, is what is the meaning of life? But that's boring because that's you know it's obviously forty two. Um, I I added this last one uh, because I thought it was funny, uh, and because it was in the pattern of all the other ones that I was seeing, and it's just what matters. What matters? Re 
real deep human connection matters. Is it weird that the first thing that came to my mind was peanut butter? <laughs> peanut butter. Peanut butter matters. And it's not that weird. I mean, it, I, it's not like there's an answer or a specific <laughs> answer. It could be peanut butter. I just felt like out of all the foods, I think that's a weird one. All the f- like, <laughs> peanut butter I, is a um, weird food or peanut butter is the weird food to think of first in, when you're thinking about things that matter? When you think about it, it's a weird food to choose. Like if you're going (laughs) to, but I think I stand by it. It's like smooth or chunky. Like it matters. (laughs) That does matter. I I have a funny Charlotte story about a banana. Sure. I don't know. She, um, so she's she's potty trained, like mostly. And uh, sometimes you have to urge her to use the restroom. So I'm like, why don't you go take a potty break? And she's like, no, I have other stuff to do. I was like, okay. So I grabbed a banana and I said, hello? Oh, Charlotte, it's the bathroom. It would like you to take a potty break. So I hand her the banana and she answers the banana because, I mean, of course we answer a banana phone. She goes, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. All right, hands me the banana back and runs off to the bathroom. Like, <laughs> what, what the? That is, that is a, a that is parenting magic at, at its yeah, best. Yeah, I was going to say, that works one parenting i guess what else could the banana tell her to do <laughs> so many things well that's Have what i'm bread, thinking eat your vegetables the thing about that though is that it's 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 not done in a sort of manipulative way a manipulative yes. way a lot of things that that mm-hmm. parents do um to get their kids to do something they don't want to do ends up being in one way or another uh manipulative either like we're you know like well i think you should do this or like do it or else or like even like well it would make me happy if you did this like even even that like or subtle manipulation but like making it like like a game like hey the bathroom says you should go to go visit okay (laughs) and like if they buy into it that i mean she could have said nah the bathroom told me that that they didn't really care that much and that would have been fine too but like she bought into it and then that that uh, means that she you know she's on board and and, and yeah that's a definitely a, a parenting win as i analyze your your parenting style <laughs> tyler had a thing recently where um he was just not like like we did cub scouts in florida it was fine it was actually pretty good we moved up here and it's like kind of lame here like it you know whatever they're not organized they're a bunch of assholes anyway um but i mean like i you know it's, it, it was what he was involved in so i didn't tell him that i thought they were assholes you know but after like a couple virtual things he was just like dad i'm not, I'm not really into this i'm sorry mm-hmm. i'm like man you don't gotta be sorry about that like i'm glad that you're you're like comfortable enough and like self-aware enough to be like hey i'm not into this you know i'm not committed to it let's find something else so, so now he does circus school. Circus school. Yeah, which is pretty amazing. It's like quite the pivot, but like it's in a good way. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at Binary Jazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.